let me see. All right, so it's being recorded right now. And, you know, just like we discussed, we want to be able to provide value to home buyers. Mm -hmm. And um, part of, I'm working with somebody right now. Uh, he reached out to me uh, a couple of months ago. He wants to buy a home and they're all, you know, a lot of home buyers, right? They're all gun ho They're very excited about their first purchase. And then when you start really diving into their situation, whether it's financial, whether it's credit, you kind of get to a, a stopping block there, a bump in the road. And what's happening is that they may have the cash, but Randy, I have this, I have this blemish on, um, I have this blemish on my credit report. What do I do? You know, um, so I figured, you know, this could be a great opportunity uh, for you with, with the experience that you have in, you know, kind of giving just raw knowledge to people who are looking for answers to these questions that they have. And we're gonna go through this list that we know that we have of questions, but before we dive, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about you, what it is that you do, and um, you know, how, how you're able to help out uh, buyers. Got it. So thank you so much for uh, allowing me um, to be part of your uh, video in this meeting. Um, my name is Nelly and um, my background is uh, I came from a car business and uh, I worked with the prime and subprime clients in the Toyota store. Uh, and that's where I saw um, huge need for credit education. Uh, people would come to the um, dealership uh, with like 400 credit score and just try to buy a large purchase of 20, $25,000. Um, and I realized that there is a need to like educate people and help them with credits before they come to dealerships, before they go to any kind of lenders to apply for loans. And that's how I created this company in 2017. Um, I started working with everybody at first, trying to help everybody with their credit situations until I realized that um, home buyers actually the, um, the best market for me personally, just because they're most motivated and they follow the um, all recommendations and that's how they get into their houses. It's good for me, good for them. And uh, my business is built only on referrals. Uh, I do not spend money on any kind of marketing. So for me, it's very important to produce results for my clients and make them happy. And, and it, at the same time, I try to like teach them about importance of the credit. Credit score is probably the most important number in America, and that determines absolutely all your purchases. Uh, whether you're renting, buying, whatever you're doing, credit cards, your job, your utilities, everything is connected to your credit score. Even your auto insurance, believe it or not, a lot of people don't realize, but their sure. auto insurance is tied to their credit score. Uh, the lower their credit score, the higher they pay for their insurances. So my job is to educate people and help them to uh, fix their blemishes on their past because a lot of people don't realize that like if you have a bad credit, it's not going to stay like this forever. It's going to stay like this forever if you don't do anything about it. So that's pretty much um, what I do. <laughs> Very good introduction. So, so you've been in this, you've been in the industry for quite some time. What is it that you've seen, like, um, you know, kind of to guide us through the process of not necessarily the home buying process, but how does credit play, play a role in the home buying process itself? Yes, we know that credit is, is extremely important, like you just mentioned, but, you know, how does, how is that, how does that, uh, uh, determine loans, um, what you're able to afford, and then more importantly, if there is a blemish, how do you fit in and how do you help out? Got it. So um, when you apply for anything, I always uh, suggest to check your credit reports first and make sure there is no uh, like uh, surprises for you. A lot of people don't realize there are 70, 80% of the time there is a mistakes on credit reports. Um, there are accounts that people don't even knew, know about in the past. So um, 
first thing is to check out your credit report, um, figure out what's correct, what's incorrect. And uh, when you purchase in a house, how credit like uh, plays a role. Uh, lenders look at three things only when uh, you are applying for the home loan. They're looking at your credit, uh, your down payment, and your income. They want to have like stability and three questions that you need to basically ask. Do you, uh, do you have uh, ability to pay back this loan? You apply for over $100,000 uh, loan and are you able to pay it back? Do you have a job that supports this um, um, paying back the loan. That kind of things that important and um, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually switch these three things, uh, income, down payment and um, credit can be basically substitute. For instance, you have a lot of income and a lot of down payment that will make credit look a little bit like unimportant, but at the same time, it's still important. It's just your credit. I mean, interest rate will be a little higher than uh, okay. if your credit would would be better. So those kind of things matter and uh, fastest way, like, for instance, a lot of people right now trying to like get into house, they don't care about interest rate. They just want a 640, 650 to qualify because this is the average um, credit score right now to qualify for home loan, 640, 650. How are you going to get there fast? Um, the fastest way to boost your credit uh, is with credit cards because your credit card payment, good on-time payment is responsible for 35% of your total credit score. You said so 35%. Yeah, 35 is the biggest actually like a portion of your credit is responsible for like your credit card payment on time payments, of course, if you have late payments that's a big no no, you need to take care of late payments as well before you apply for home loans, especially if you apply for FHA loan. Uh, so yeah main thing is like a credit card payment pay down all your balances, stop swiping your cards and start paying down. And when you're paying down, paying down twice a month instead of once a month actually helps the situation and gives you a little bit uh, faster points uh, applying for um, authorized user account on somebody on a family member, on family member's credit card also will help uh, to boost credit very fast within 30 to 60 days. I always say, if you need to get into a house like in the next 90 days, credit cards is your best friend and you need to utilize them. How, how is it, you mentioned that uh, they need to have the ability to pull their credit and check it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously we hear at least once a year, where do they have to go to, to pull their credit? Well, there are some free options, of course, to pull your credit with the annualcredit.com. Yes, you can do that. Um, you can check your credit with the, uh, sources like Credit Karma. But I always say, if you get in something for free, you have to give away all your information. You become a product. And I definitely don't recommend going with the free sources. First of all, they, they have some kind of flaws. For instance, annualcreditreport.com do not give you any kind of credit scores. They give you your full report, but no scores. Uh, credit score, karma, right? huh? excuse me? Yeah, you, you have to pay for the score. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you have to pay for uh, it. And Credit Karma gives you only two uh, scores against all three. So I always say there are different sources to pull your credit. It's uh, but pay like paying uh, for to get the um, credit report. You're gonna get much more information. Plus, uh, most of uh, credit monitoring uh, accounts come with some kind of identity theft protection. So definitely, there is a, a benefit of using credit monitoring um, on the paid versions in, uh, rather than free versions, which does not give you anything. And some credit cards also offer um, yes. credit monitoring. Yeah. Yeah, they offer credit scores, but credit not score, the yep. reports. So definitely it's very useful to know your credit score, but I always say your credit score is derived from your credit report. That's why it's more important for you to see your credit report. So if there is some kind of mistake or you see like high utilization, you need to take action.
you need to take action. And your credit score itself is not going to give you any, any kind of information other than numerical. How does it work when somebody goes, if it's a married couple or somebody that's filing jointly on a loan, if mm -hmm. one person has fairly good credit and the other one not so good credit, how does that work? And then what can, what can be done to help the, the, the one that, was, that has a lower, the lower score? Okay, uh, many, many uh, couples would like to be on a loan just because they want to be part of this uh, house. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the reason. But from the lender's perspective, the only reason you should apply for joint uh, loan is when one income is not sufficient to support this loan. Okay. Uh, if you want to be, you can still be on a deed, definitely. You don't have to be on a loan to be part of this house. Um, that's what I recommend. I always ask them, what's the reason you want to be on a loan? Because uh, unlike uh, any other type of loans, like for instance, if you go to dealership and your credit is 750, my credit is 550, they will um, basically approve your credit score. But if we do the same thing with a home purchase, for instance, they will approve based on my 550 credit score, not yours. Because on a home purchase, they always go by the lowest credit score uh, oh, okay. than, rather than highest, yes. That's interesting. You know, I, I had a phone call um, two days ago. Uh, client makes decent money, ready to buy a home, but then he has, he's like, Randy, I have a collection on my report. He has one collection. He said, according to him, everything else is fine, but he has one collection. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's already gone to collections, mm -hmm. is it advisable from a credit rating perspective? Is it best to settle with the, uh, with the collection, with the, you know, with the creditor, or do you just pay it off and call it a day? Like, is it better to show, like on the credit report, does it show as settled or does it show as paid? And does either one have more value in terms of raising your credit score? Great question. Um, once account is in collection, the damage is done. And the only way to turn that collection into positive is by removing it all together from your credit. Paying down this collection, let's say you pay this down and instead of $500 balance, now it's showing zero balance but it's still a collection. It's still affecting your score negatively. The only thing that's changed is the debt to income ratio now. Now your debt is $500 less than before, but credit score, unfortunately, did not change. For those kind of people, I always ask, are you in a hurry? If they're in a hurry, I recommend them to reach out to collection company, try to settle, but they have to negotiate the removal from the uh, credit report. That's the only way for them to like make that account positive. If they do have some time to work on this account, especially if the balance is, for instance, more than thousand bucks, I recommend them to dispute. To dispute this account, give about three months because this is how long it takes for average disputing process uh, and, and try to remove this account from the credit report altogether by finding some kind of discrepancy mistake on a credit report. How do they dispute? Uh, it's going to be a two. It's going to be a two two prong question. Number one, how do they dispute? Mm -hmm. And then the second one, uh, I think I'm gonna have to edit this part because I just totally forgot what that second question is. So I'm okay. gonna definitely gonna delete this part. Awesome, <laughs> awesome that you can do. So that. how do they dispute? So, so the way they dispute the account, I always say, do not use these templates that you can find on Google. Use your own story, be a human, because you're trying to reach a human, essentially. Because when you're disputing accounts online or like using the templates, uh, they have a system called eOscar, and that's a machine, basically. It's a machine that reads your letter and determines what to do with your uh, dispute, whether to verify your account or delete this account. That's the machine. But your goal, if you want the fastest result, is to reach a human, because all credit bureaus do have humans that work there, and you need to just put your story there. What, what happened with this account? Why you disagree with the balance? For instance, a lot of people People don't realize that balances that show on the collection accounts incorrect 
because they essentially didn't sign up for like thousand twenty to two hundred and twenty cents, for instance. Mm -hmm. They sign up for two hundred dollar. Everything else is interest and fees. And your job, my job as a specialist, is to find a mistake uh, that, like, even if I find a, like a one dollar or one cent mistake discrepancy between what they're reporting on my credit and what actually is by my agreement that's enough ground to request a removal from your credit so as you can see it's very very like meticulous work to find a mistake and stuff but that's that's called factual disputing you're not saying like this is not mine or whatever you're saying hey i disagree with this this is my ground and this is my proof if you have for instance proof sometimes people have um like screenshots from their, their bank accounts that they paid off the balances. Another good story probably like a lot of people need to know about the collection companies, how collection companies operate. A lot of them operate illegally. They just purchase the debt. And, yeah, like they purchase the debt, but they don't have anything to back up this debt, you okay. know? They don't have any kind of documentations that like for instance nelly owes them like 300 dollars. they just have my name my contact and my original creditor that i owe 300 dollars. so here's what happened with my client last year she was applying for the house she had 1800 dollar collection on her credit and she needed like to fix it fast so she reached uh, she reached out to the collection company that was on her credit report and uh, she basically paid this balance. She paid the balance, moved into her house, six months down the road, collection company calls you and requests that 1800. So the thing is she never validated this debt. She never validated, anybody can own your debt. It can be like sold, resold all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you don't know why this collection company is, uh, um, requesting this amount from you do they have any agreements that you sign with the original credit do they have like a transfer of the debt there is like special document that's called transfer of the debt that each collection company has to have on your account but a lot oh. of them don't from my experience don't they don't when we request some documentation to prove the debt validate the debt a lot of them cannot provide us with anything and that's how we achieve the removals that's is, there, how is, there, is, is there a time period between uh, submitting for a, um, a dispute and then the time that the creditor or the collections agency has to respond to that before the credit bureau says, okay, it's no longer valid, let's just drop it all together? Is there a time period there? Great question. It was. It was a time of 30 days to respond uh, before pandemic hit. Ever since March 2020, everything changed. Now, uh, credit bureaus and collection companies don't have any limited time to respond due to pandemic. Oh, wow. uh, they understaffed and they don't have to basically respond uh, 30 days. They basically say, um, how, how do they explain it? Reasonable time to respond. <laughs> That's how they say it. But what can be reasonable? Can be six months. <laughs> 12 months, you know, like yeah. reasonable timing. That's what it is so far. Like, and I know there is like a company credit uh, repair organization company called NASCO. They actually filed a uh, lawsuit. So they stopped this like and um, put back because a lot of people cannot qualify for their home loans, qualify for their um, this uh, business loans and everything due to credit bureaus not responding on time. We saw major uh, slowdown when pandemic just started. Like for three months, people wasn't getting any kind of response from credit bureaus. Oh, wow. Well, this happened to me personally, and it was regarding a uh, medical bill. I'm sure medical bills are huge when it comes to uh, credit uh, issues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I, it was only for 20 bucks or $40, something very minimal. Um, but I, I was uh, against the actual thought that I, I just didn't own it. Like it, there was no reason for them to charge me that amount of money. And um, I called them, I, I talked to the billing department. I kept disputing it with them. They kept sending me bills. They kept sending me bills. I kept calling them. 
and we just got into this vicious cycle. It was a very ugly cycle. Finally, they just reported it. Um, they sent me a final bill and it said, you know, we're sending it to collections. So at that point, uh, I got lucky in that the billing is here locally where I live. So I drove over there unexpected and ended up talking to somebody face to face. They ended up taking, I ended up, long story short, I ended up just paying it and just getting it over with. Uh, it was very minimal, but a lot of times what happens, it, it shifts from uh, once it leaves billing and goes to collections, mm -hmm. the customer no longer can deal with a regional creditor, yes. the actual, um, the actual they, company, right? They have to deal with the collections. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it not possible for them to send it back? Like collection says. Once it's it. in collection, it's done. Like that's the it. damage is done. Yeah. No way to return other than like completely removing it from your history. And so who has the ability to remove it from your credit report? The collections department? The collections uh, agency? Yes. Collection they can do it. needs to report to, because essentially credit bureau is going to remove it from your credit. But collections needs to like notify the bureau saying like, hey, he either satisfied the debt or like we, we, we settled the amount or whatever, right? Like collection company needs to report to the bureaus. Bureaus will remove it from your credit. The, the actual negative yes. part of it. Yes. So they have the ability to do that. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, collection companies and credit bureaus. Those are the two, uh, I mean, four basically, organizations that can remove your, uh, your accounts. Your credit. Who are the four again? Uh, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, and collection company that you're working with. Uh huh. Okay. But you have to let them know. And some of them might be dirty. Yes, yes, yes. And not want to do that for you. Yes. If you're not going to speak up, like they're not going to do anything. They won't. Is it to their benefit to do collection companies? They have a very bad rap. Yes. They're very harsh and brash on the phone. Um, they're just trying to collect money. Do they try to help or they is there a job to help you or is there a job just to freaking collect? In my experience, it's just to collect money. Just to it's collect. A business. It's a for-profit business that uh, collection companies buy your debt for pennies. If you owe them hundreds, they buy, they buy it for like $10, $20. And uh, then they try to like collect the full amount and that's their profit between $10 and $100, whatever is in between is their uh, profit. And that's how they able to negotiate with you and give you some kind of offers. Oh, like you owe us thousands, but you can pay us $200 and be done with it. This is how actually they uh, make their money. Interesting. Okay, now say that they've, um... Say that they're ready to apply for a loan, mm -hmm. the customer is ready to apply for a loan and their credit rating is just a lower on, on the low side, not quite 640 or 650. What's a quick way, uh, what are some quick tips uh, that they can do to help jack up their, their uh, credit rating a little bit so that they can be able to qualify for a loan? Um, like I mentioned before, the fastest way to jack up your credit score would be uh, utilizing your credit cards correctly. Okay. Uh, either yours or somebody in your family. Um, immediately, you need to become an authorized user on um, somebody in the family with a good credit score, with a low credit utilization on the credit card. That's very, very important. Do not put low yourself... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Mary. Low, util low utilization meaning... What? Meaning that like, for instance, credit limit is $1,000 on a credit card. Low utilization is considered anything less than $300. Okay, so anything 30%? Less, yes, 30%. Okay. But ideally, I always recommend to stay under 10% when you're applying for the home loan. This is the fastest way to, for you to uh, pick up points. Let's say you have a $1,000 limit credit card and your balances is 800 for you you can easily pick up 20 30 points if you uh, drop this uh, balances under hundred dollar okay how fast okay. do the credit bureaus update the credit uh, 30, days. 30 days 30 days yes 
So okay. uh, like you do this today, 30 days later, you're going to see the effect on your credit score. Okay. With most of them. Like uh, some banks work slower. Uh, Bank of America, I noticed they slower. It takes them 60 days to update. But great banks like Delta, Navy Federal, Capital One, they very, very fast. Very good. They work efficiently. Finally, one last question that I, and one common question that I always get is, you know, I'm shopping, I'm shopping with a lender. I went to my bank and they gave me, uh, they pulled my credit and they said, I'm approved for whatever, okay, at this interest rate. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, have you shopped around? No, I'm scared to shop around because if I shop around, it's going to drop my credit score. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's the truth behind that? Is, is that accurate? The truth is, I would say, like, do your research before you start applying um, or talk to somebody very knowledgeable in lending world uh, so you know your options based on your credit score, because you can get that numbers without letting them pull your credit as long as you're dealing with a knowledgeable person. Um, so if you try to, like, shop around, for instance, for the uh, rate, uh, your score is going to go down and you go and have like several uh, hits on your credit. Every time your credit is pulled, it's lowering your score. But it's true that like uh, in, if you shop in within like two weeks, uh, all your hard inquiries will be considered as one. as one. But from my experience, I don't see people shopping within two weeks, especially for the houses. They shop like for months, for months. And they let lenders pull their credit over and over and over. Um, I say, like, don't do it. Do your research before you apply. Know what you can qualify for based on your income and your credit score. And then go from there. And from that point, it, it's, it's a matter of finding your house. Because like if you did your research up front, you know for a fact this is the lowest interest I can get based on my situation. Yeah. Like, you know, right now it's so easy. It's like from like what, uh, 1.9 to 3.9. This is it. And everything in between is my options. Okay. So the trick is to, if you're going to do it, fi uh, apply for, uh, you know, have lenders pull credit, but within a two week time frame, yeah. and that'll count as one hard inquiry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. And same with the uh, auto loans too. Okay. So, I think we covered a good deal here today. Um, any final words that you want to give to uh, to the audience? Yes, uh, like uh, as far as the medical bills, uh, I see like a large amount of medical collections popping up lately. And I would say, if you are trying to dispute those accounts yourself, uh, always look at the dates. Uh, the trick with the medical collections is they have to, like hospitals have to wait for 180 days, which is six months uh, before they send out your uh, account to collections. So um, if they didn't, most of the hospitals send out your account to collections after three months of not getting paid. But insurance companies have to have some time to like pay down your balances and everything. Right. Um, so for that reason, they have six months to do so, but hospitals don't wait. And that's the easiest way for you to like dispute and remove the account if you dispute the dates. Very good. And if, for instance, the credit repair is a pretty like a detailed process. Uh, it's not just like a sending out dispute. It's a, like a overall process that includes like your positive and negative accounts and inquiries as well even your like a uh, place of living right like believe it or not if you clean up your addresses from your uh, history that will boost your score too um, overall credit report needs to have everything in one like one name one date of birth one social one address and, and so on and one job uh, everything else needs to be like uh, cleaned up that's what I would say. And if you don't have time to work on your credit, uh, you can always reach out to me and um, I'll help you to navigate like, uh, and give you consultation absolutely free of charge. How, how are they able to get a hold of you? 
they can call our office and our number is 404-600-9877. And uh, also they can email me. It's Nelly, N-E-L-L-Y, uh, at allinone.consulting. That's my email. Um, if you give me 24 hours, I usually respond within that time frame. Very good. And we'll, we're going to keep, uh, I'll make sure to have your uh, contact information in the description below if wherever this ends up showing up on YouTube or wherever. Um, but Nelly, I want to thank you so much for your time. Very, very, you dropped some knowledge bombs. I hope, I'm sure everybody's going to have, uh, they're going to get a lot of value of what you said here today. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me here.